he's a horse that hasn't really been in a in a in much of a fight this year. But would you really like to see him sort of learn, like give him the opportunity to get down and dirty and fight, or do you think he's a horse that just doesn't no, need I, one? I'd hate it. <laughs> I'd, I, I'm sure he would. I mean, but nobody knows. He's never been in a dog fight. Nobody knows. He might curl up and say, "I can't." I doubt it. At least I hope I doubt it. I certainly do. You know, I have full confidence in him. But one day, this can't go on forever. Mm -hmm. We know that. There was a lovely quote from Patrick Mullins where he said that he saw the horse lift his front two legs two inches while he was in the air in that final hurdle in the champion hurdle last year. So he's got the brain power to know he might have just got it a little bit wrong, but actually I'm going to save myself at the right time. Did that, when you rewatched it again, sort of amaze you even more? Because it was a shock for everyone, but actually it was quite clever how he managed to save himself. It was. I mean, a couple of people said that, that they were, they were down at the last and, and they saw what he did. And as Nico would said, well, the only reason he could do it, because he was a fresh horse, he'd got the strength, you know, that that's why you'll see falls like that, or what might have happened there. You'll see it at the, you know, at the end of a race, because they, they're probably tired horses. Mm -hmm. But he had the sort of strength to invent wings in midair. Not many horses can do it, not many horses can do it at the last, because they're meant to be tired by then. You know, you're responsible for something that's a bit special. So there is that little extra bit of pressure. We've got to produce the goods, and he's got to, and we're responsible for it. We've got to get him there. You know as well as I do that that path is full of mines and potholes and goodness knows what, and everything has to go right. It hasn't. We had a blip in the middle. He wasn't, um, I mean, he wasn't ill. He just had a dirty scope, and if you go running galloping horses like that, you'll get into a lot of trouble. Um, so we had to pull stumps for a couple of weeks, which is happens to, you know, most horses get it every year, possibly. He went into last year's champion hurdle on exactly the same programme as this year, except the fighting fifth didn't happen, because it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So he can't have run more often, it's impossible. You know, you've got the responsibility, but also it, everybody's expecting it. And therefore, they probably enjoy the race more than we do. Mm -hmm. We probably enjoy the bit afterwards more than they do. Thank goodness that's over and it's worked. Yeah. I'm not complaining <laughs> because you're very, very lucky boys to have horses like this and they don't come around very often. State man, who's state man? Eh? <laughs> Never heard of him, have we? And we'll move on to, to Shishkin because he seems to me to be in the perfect National Hunt horse and that you've had him run over two miles. He's been a speed horse. He's developed into a Gold Cup horse. Can you look back on his profile now and think, he's actually turned out to be the real National Hunt dream, really? He is. He's lovely. Um, I thought he was, you know, they were a bit cruel to him, really, before, before the, 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 the um, Denman chase at Newbury. It sounded like he was a, an escaped convict. You know, he'd done something terrible wrong. He had at Ascot. That was his fault, I must admit. Um, but Kempton was not his fault. And I thought it was unfair. I mean, you know, I'm not saying he would have won, but he'd still run a fantastic race, bearing in mind that was his first run of the season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'd have to be very happy at what he did at Kempton, whether he'd have won or not. Um, and then he was very good at Newbury. So, you know, He's done, I say, the only thing he's done wrong is decided he didn't want to jump that fence going down the hill at Ascot. Did he give you the impression at Newbury and Nico as well that he's a horse that is just really enjoying the stamina test that he's been, that he's been given this year and that he, and he's I'm improving over further? I'm sure it helps him, yeah. I mean, you know, he's, he, he, it's much easier for him to get into a rhythm. Mm. And that's, I think, what he's enjoying. And, you know, a lot of people ask, will he stay? That's three miles three and a quarter up the hill. Well, I, I personally, I think you'll love it, but I may well be wrong. You've obviously had Bobsworth, you've had long, long run, very, very different horses, or are there, there similarities there? Very right? different, yeah. One was very talented, long run. Mm. Um, he was a very, very good horse. Bobsworth, well, of course he was a very good horse. He won a Gold Cup, he won a Lexus, he won a Sun Alliance, he won the Novice Hurdle at Cheltenham as well, yeah. and the RSA, and then the Gold Cup, mm. the Lexus. He was the most lovely, lovely person you ever saw. And for what he lacked in talent, 
he made up for it in heart. He just didn't know when to give up. And if he got to the bottom of the hill in contention, they were always going to be in trouble because he would fight his way up there. And with him, he's a classic national uh, staying chaser with those reasons. And you, you probably always felt a lot of confidence in the horse because you knew that he was going to run through a brick wall for you. So with Shishkin, with what's happened this year, do you take a little bit more of a, oh, what's going to happen? Will that be like that at Cheltenham? I don't know. I just I think he's reliable. He might race a little lazily at times, mm -hmm. but you know that's why I think going further is probably in his favour. Mm -hmm. um, he can't go any faster than what he was doing when he was running over two miles. Yeah. So hopefully he'll be in his comfort zone throughout the race. Um, they'll always go a good gallop, that's for sure. Yeah. Not too dissimilar to John Bond, who will go on to who's clearly developed maturing he's maturing into the horse that you probably always knew was there well he was always a bit of a fidget and it, it, i mean early in the season when he's fresh we take him for quite a few away days mm. or even just put him in the horse box and drive him round for an hour and he'll sweat like nothing on earth but once you've got that out of his system earlier on then he gets better and better and better and you don't have to do you know you can treat him like a normal horse on race day Whereas before, you used to, you know, in his early races, um, you ought to be very careful with him and mm -hmm. getting him through the preliminaries is not the easiest thing in the world. Whereas this time of the year, he's, he's so much more relaxed. He doesn't, you know, he used to sweat a lot at home, but he doesn't now. Mm -hmm. it, 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 he's been the same every year. He's, once you've got the freshness out of him, he's, he's very good. You had a very creative, enjoyable campaign to watch with him. Have you learnt that what, what he can do and what he can achieve now in sort of an open company? Have you felt like he's a, he's a better horse this year? I don't know if he's better, but the, the funny thing is we've always been itching to go two and a half, two and a half. I'm thinking that'll suit him. Yet he keeps proving himself over two. He's winning the Tingle Creeks and all he has to do. I mean, the, the only pit he was obviously in, in, the, in the rerun of the Clarence House. And that's why I say I would have, I'd love that to have happened the week before when it was meant to happen. And I was, I was really looking forward to the clash with El Fabiola. I would, we, I'd have been confident going into Ascot. Then we get the rerun and it all goes wrong. So, yeah, but with him, that week wasn't a help. It just sort of took us all out of our stride a bit. And it, I had him so ready for Ascot, I was confident. And, you know, with him, a week is a long time in his head. And it's exactly the opposite to Constitution. Yeah. If, but if they start behaving differently, if Constitution woke up one morning, I'd be worried. Yeah. And yet if John Bond went to sleep, mm -hmm. I'd be worried. Yeah, yeah. And finally, Sergino, I just wanted to ask, because I know a couple of years ago when I did this interview with you, you didn't know how to separate John Bonn and Constitution Hill going into the Supreme. I know Sergino is your, your big hope. He's a he's a it's a short price for the Triumph. But are you as confident as you would be with him as you were with horses of that nature a couple of years ago? I don't know which where I was confident. I think I'd go back and say Altior when he won the Supreme mm -hmm. was about as confident as you could ever be. And we went through all these press days. And I think it was Min was around at the time, wasn't he? And I watched Min and I thought, well, Min, good luck, mate. You ain't going to, you won't beat this. And I think that was the only time I've ever seriously gone in to a race at Cheltenham thinking this will not get beaten. Mm -hmm. And it, that's how good Altior was as a young horse. I don't, I, I'm not thinking that about, um, Sergino. Okay. I don't think I even ever thought that about Constitution Hill as a supreme no, horse. You couldn't but separate you couldn't them. get beaten. Mm. Um, yeah, John Bomb was there as well. But I, can't, I couldn't even say Sergino is, there's no such thing as a certainty. I, I think Altior was that year, but uh, this isn't one either. This is a very talented horse, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen it really yet. I mean, we have, we saw it once on trials day. I've seen it a few days at home. We knew pretty well going into the trials day that it, we thought he was a bit special. Yeah, so hopefully he's given you the confidence at least to, to feel that you've got a horse, especially made probably after you saw the Dublin Racing Festival, that this, this horse could be at least deserved at the top of the market. 
Yeah, there was nothing that was going to take him over. Mm -hmm. It was going to take over the, his position as favourite, mm -hmm. probably from there. But that doesn't mean it isn't there. Mm -hmm. There are. I bet you Willie's still got one in his drawer. <laughs> I'll bet you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com. <laughs>